out of everything that we could possibly study in personal development, there's one thing that is the foundation to everything in our life, and that is self-image. Okay, it's how we see ourselves. I didn't figure this out. Dr. Maxwell Maltz figured this out. He wrote a book called Psycho Cybernetics, and it's all about self-image. He was a plastic surgeon, and what he would do is he would go and take these people, these women that were well, these women, just an example, right? He would take these women who were quote unquote ugly, they thought they were ugly, right? And he would make them beautiful, object subjectively, right? What he found was that after the surgery that he did, they went out into the world. So he's just li literally taken this ugly woman and made her beautiful. She would go out in the world. And of course, because she's now beautiful, she looks amazing. She's attracting beautiful men. She's attracting a hotter partners, right? Now, one thing he realized was that, wow, these women didn't feel worthy holding this man, like having a relationship with this man because they still felt like they were ugly. So they didn't feel worthy of having this guy. That was the craziest thing, right? And why was that? The reason why is because they still saw themselves as ugly, even though their external had changed, their internal, their self image, how they saw themselves didn't change. And this is why I want to talk to you today about because self-image is, I was just thinking about it recently. I've been doing work on this myself for my own self-image. And I was like, wow, this is such an important piece of becoming who we want to become. Because I've seen so many examples of people who I thought were great, but they didn't think so. And so, because they don't think they're great, they don't achieve what they want to achieve. And people have seen that in me too. They're like so frustrated. Like my jiu-jitsu coach is so frustrated with me because he's like, hey, he sees so much in me, but I don't see it for myself. It's like my self-image in jiu-jitsu was, was, has been quite low, right? And so, but he sees the potential because he's, he's a black belt. I'm not, I'm a blue belt. It's just a fascinating concept. One of the things I saw in Thailand, I was in the gym and I was chatting to this one guy. He's like super muscly, six pack. Like he's like Brad Pitt, but with bigger muscles, right? And, <laughs> and, and he's ripped. And so I was talking to this guy and as I'm talking to him, this cute girl walks in that he liked and he's like, well, he's, he tells me, he's like, oh, she's, fuck, oh, she's, she's gorgeous. I was like, go and talk to her. He's like, oh, no, I'm not, uh, no, I can't talk to her. What, what, what am I going to say? Like, what if she says this, what if she says that? I, I, no, 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 no. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, dude, like, look at you. You look fucking amazing. Like, just go talk to her, bro. No, 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 I can't. No, no, don't be silly. Wow. Amazing. Couldn't believe it. But then now I understand it. It's because he didn't see himself as that person that can confidently go and talk to a beautiful woman. He saw himself as the timid, shy, low confidence guy, right? The guy that's socially awkward. That's how he saw himself. Therefore, it doesn't matter about how he looks. He had all the muscles. He was that body goals times a hundred, right? <laughs> but he didn't want, he couldn't muster up the courage to talk to a girl. It doesn't matter about the externals, like how you feel about yourself, how you see yourself. That's going to determine everything in your life. And another example is I was on the plane on Southwest Airlines in America a few years ago, and I'm walking on the plane and this stewardess is black, black guy, uh, cabin crew, right? And he's just on the mic. He's just cracking jokes. Everyone's cracking up laughing. He is hilarious. It's like, it's like Chris Rock was on the plane. It's hilarious. Anyway, so I'm sitting on the um, emergency aisle next to the window. And there's two seats next to me, right? He comes and sits right next to me. Like not, not the one over from me, but literally right next to me. And I'm like, dude, my initial reaction was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but then we started talking as the plane was taking off and he was the cool dude. Like we're just cracking jokes. I was getting to know him. And I, I asked him, I was like, why are you working this job? You know, because you, you seem to have like lots of talent. Like you're an entertainer, you're confident, you're funny. Like why are you working this job? Like there's more in store for you. And he said, well, I need to pay the bills. I was like, oh, okay. So um, what do you want to do? And he's like, well, I really want to do singing. I was like, okay, so are you doing singing right now? No, I'm not doing singing. And as he said that, his whole vibe just changed. Like he was this confident guy and he's like, no, I, I'm not singing. And he just became so quiet and timid. And I was like, what the, what's going on? And I was like, why dude? Like, why are you not, why are you not singing, bro? And he's like, well, you know, I just, uh, I just don't think I'm good enough. I was like, oh, interesting. Like, I mean, some people aren't good enough, so <laughs> sing for me, like sing something. And he sang 30 seconds. And I was, I was like blown away. Like this guy's voice, amazing, amazing. And uh, yeah, we exchanged contact details. I was like, yo, I'm like, 
I was like, I'm gonna gonna help you with this and you know, help you believe in yourself. But ultimately, you can't help someone believe in themselves. They need to believe in themselves themselves. And um, his self image was that he just felt like he wasn't good enough. Like he couldn't do that. So I don't know where he is now. We haven't like he hasn't messaged me or anything. But to to get to the level that he wants to get at, he needs to increase his self image. Otherwise, he's gonna stay where he is. And even if even if he does like do singing less, like not singing lessons, if he let's say he does make some music, does some operas or whatever it's called, does some shows, if he doesn't change how he sees himself, he's always going to come back to where he currently is in life, and that's the that's the messed up thing about it. Like one of my uh, business mentors, he went and got a six pack, right? He he was skinny fat, and then he did the work over a few months, and then he, he got in shape. Like he he showed me a picture. And he had he had a four pack like he had a what his version of a six pack was, and I was so happy for him. And then he's like, yeah, but you know, I just started eating chocolate and now I gained it all back. And I was like, what? Like, what's going on there? And he said, I never felt worthy of having the six pack. And translation, I didn't see myself as that person. Therefore, I see myself as the person with the belly. So I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get back to that version of me. That's not conscious. You you don't say that out loud. You don't want that, right? But it's all subconscious because of the self-image. Like we're always going to actively work as hard as we can to stay at the level of which we believe ourselves to be at and our our image, right? Like we're always going to do whatever it takes to stay consistent with how we see ourselves. So that's why self-image is so important because no matter how much you achieve, like for example, me, like I'd spend, I'd make loads of money and then I'd spend it all and be like, where the fuck's it gone? Because my self-image was here. Like I saw myself as this, at this level of wealth. So if I, I went over that, I had to come back down because that's how I see myself. So how do I get more wealth and hold it and keep it? I need to increase the, my self-image. I need to I- expand my container. Otherwise, I'm always going to hit a ceiling, right? And then when I go up, I want to come back down. And that's like someone who wants to lose weight, right? Like, let's say you do all the work. Like I just explained my business mentor, you do all the work, but then you come back to where you were. You're like, what the hell is going on? I had the solution, right? I had the right trainer. I had the right nutrition plan. I was sleeping good. I was taking care of my emotional health, my mental health. And all of a sudden I'm back to where I started because of how you see yourself, right? And so this is the missing piece that most people are missing when it comes to getting in the best shape of their life. They think it's a diet. Everyone thinks it's the diet, right? That's the biggest myth in the whole space of health. It's like everyone thinks it's the carnivore diet, it's the vegan diet, it's the paleo, it's the keto. No, it's not. Like those help? Yeah, sure. Like whatever you do, it's, it helps. But it, that's not the, the root of the problem, right? It's like cutting the weeds. You cut the top of the weed, the weed still grows, right? So that's not, that's not the be or end all solution. It's you got to take the problem out at the root is to address the self-image and the limiting beliefs. That's how you create lasting change in whatever area of life you want. So for me right now, I'm doing that in my business. I'm like, what limiting beliefs? What's my self-image in my business, right? And what, what things am I not aware of that are ruling my behavior? Because your unconscious thoughts dictate your behavior. So whatever is unconscious, until you bring that to the conscious mind, it will continue to rule your life and you'll call it fate. Carl Jung said that. And that's so, so true, right? Like we have to uncover these unconscious limiting beliefs that we have and our self-image about ourselves, so we can increase it. And if you want, to, want help with that, if you want to do this for real and you want to get in the best shape of your life, you want to you know, work out three times a week, only three times a week, get in the best shape of your life. I only work out three times a week on my body, like physically. Like I do jiu-jitsu and stuff, but in the gym, three times a week. So if you want that and you want to get handle on this self-image thing and really pull this problem out at the root so that you can move forward and make progress consistently and start building these healthy habits and start really getting that mindset because that's what I geek out on a lot. So I have a module in the program specifically centered on the mindset required for health, right? Like applied to health. Like what are your limiting beliefs around getting in the best shape of your life? Do you believe that you're always going to be fat? Do you believe that you're big boned? All these limiting beliefs that are bullshit, like that you have so much proof over your life to believe in these things, which is why you can't get the result. 
and you're looking out for another diet, but it's not that. That's not the solution. The solution is, what do you believe to be true about this thing that you can't seem to figure out? We start there and then we build from there, okay? So that's what I'm offering you. Go ahead and click the link in the bio to get access to that. And I uh, hope you found this video helpful. As usual, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.